Are you a woman that can't seem to shake that nagging, self-criticizing voice in your head? If so, this video is for you. Hi there, I'm Sierra Sullivan, and I have been empowering women just like you for over a decade. And I've been on my own personal process my entire life to become the most empowered woman I possibly can. And I tell you, the number one thing that I find and I have seen with my work with women and in myself that gets in our way is our own negative self-talk, our self-criticism. So I want to give you a quick tip today that has ex helped me in extraordinary ways to overcome my nagging self-doubt and demeaning voices. And it has put me on a path to becoming more confident, more free, more uh, communicative, more light and fluffy, more energetic, and a way better woman to be in a relationship with. So. For those of you that have potentially taken my course, I have a program called Tame Your Inner Critic, but I'm not here to tell you the whole thing. It's a whole process, but I want to give you one quick tip that's going to help you immediately begin to identify what it is that you can do to shift the voice in your head. You see, these voices in our head come from rules. There's these rules that we make uh, subconsciously when we're young. And so they, they're basically survival mechanisms. They're saying, okay, so, you know, I was singing when I was young. My mom had a headache. She told me to be quiet. I made an agreement because it hurt me that she said to be quiet when I was expressing myself. And therefore, I now have a belief that if I sing and express myself, I won't get love. Very simple, right? You can insert anything here. So you go through life not expressing yourself, not wanting, you know, to break the rules that if you express yourself, you'll get love. So you don't express yourself because you impose that rule. So that cri critic will come up often in your life when it comes to putting yourself out there in any way, whether it be writing a book, doing a video, speaking on stage, um, you know, you name it. So the number one way that you can actually begin to dismantle and diffuse that critical voice is to separate that voice from yourself. So that's number one, separate that voice from yourself. Now, how do you separate that voice from yourself? You have to give it its own personality because technically it does. It's not your personality. You ultimately as an adult woman knows or an adult man even knows that, okay, this doesn't really make sense. I know I'm not going to die or not get love if I speak up for myself or if I express myself or if I sing or if I stand on that stage. But there's still this paralyzing fear and this critic that says, don't you dare. Who do you think you are? Nobody's going to listen to you anyways. You don't have anything to say to anybody, right? Do these sound familiar? So you need to, when that voice, when that critic shows up, you need to say, oh, hello, critic. You know, you're here. But even more than that, because you do need to separate them, the best technique that I have found for shifting my voices is to not just separate myself from the critic, but to name the critic. When you name the critic, it becomes a personified version of that voice. And from that place, you can begin to not only see the characteristics of that critic and what that critic is actually there for. But you can also begin a very honest dialogue ultimately with yourself to discover why that critic exists in the first place. Now there's a lot more to this technique and I might share a few more tips in the weeks to come, but I want you to practice this technique. If you can notice the voice, identify the voice, be fun and get give it a name, give it a fun name. You know, I've got some really fun names with mine. I've got Malice and Fearly. I've got Pussy McPuckerton. I've got Hagatha Krusty. I've got Little Miss Piss. Like, I have a lot of fun naming these critics because then it lightens up the energy in which they're criticizing me. And I'm able to act like a mature adult working with an energy of a little child, which is pretty much what they are and where they stemmed from. And then I'm able to actually have an honest dialogue with myself about what it is that they're needing so that I can provide that need. I can personally meet that need. And then they ultimately soften. And not even that, sometimes they even go away altogether, but sometimes they actually work as fuel for my own success. So like I mentioned, this is a whole longer process, but I'm curious and I challenge you to begin to name your inner critics and I would love to hear what they have to say. So post below, give me some names, who are they, what do they want, what are they, what are they criticizing you about and let's have some fun dialogue. 
Awesome. Great to see you today. Hope you'll tune in next week. I'm Sierra Sullivan with Lifestyleize. Have a beautiful day.